The only other thing I really want to talk about today is, is loading cattle. Because I see a lot of people get hurt loading cattle. And if we want to run any, through more, any more through this process, and we can, it's getting pretty toasty down here for these heifers, so I don't want to harass them too much. But this is kind of fun. Now, since we've trained them to come out this side, we're going to set this panel over here. This is our, this is our slider, Temple. <laughs> we're going to slide it across the gate. So they, they can't get out the way they, they're trained to get out. So we can use a, a bud box or a sweep or anything else to load trailers with, we can wire off of the sweep, we can go out the other side of a box and make it all work for the same purpose. Now, ideally, I'd probably have 10 or 20 feet of straight alley coming off of there to get the cattle committed to go and then they can jump on the trailer. But here, I can put enough pressure on them, I think they'll jump out of that. And uh, we'll see, not they'll jump on top of me. We'll see how that works. Now this is another thing, they can load all these heifers on that trailer at one time. My problem is I can't get them all in the box at one time. So this brings up a point, a box is expandable. If you're gonna be loading semis, you can make it bigger to where you can get a whole compartment in there. Remember, it's a flow through part, so you wanna get them all in there and get them all to flow out, but you need more capacity for semis. Stock trailers, it might actually work for this. I may try it, if it don't, I'll split them and go that way. It what doesn't hurt to put part of them on, close a cut gate. Some of us are immune to doing that, I think. We don't ever close a cut gate, we just cram them on there and go. And these will fit on there pretty comfortable, so we'll see what happens. But my bug box is my limiting factor on this one. But we'd lose the same process we did loading the bud box. Do you tie that up a little? Yes. You're my man. So I could just vision that panel hit me in the back of the head. All right. I'm gonna try something here that I don't have a clue whether this is gonna work or not. But a lot of times if we'll load cattle this way, they will stay on the trailer without us doing anything. So I'm gonna bring about half to two thirds of them. I'll get them all in the alley. I'll jump the first ones on and then I'll bring the rest of them in and and load them on the trailer. I just think that's a, maybe too many to put in that box. They're all looking at me like, not again, fool. I really appreciate the use of the horse, the cattle, the facilities, the whole nine yard. This has been a, a fun group to work with. And it's no small feat to get people to let you bring their stock up for me to play with, and I understand that. Now, I don't know how many people that you couldn't have made take half of them and come back and get the other half for any money in the world. But sometimes it's the best thing you can do. They think this is something different now. And they're right. Now I'm gonna get my flow started. This heifer will find an opening, hopefully.
Now that my first job is going to be to turn those on the trailer back around so they don't want to come play with us. And then start this one. Hey, hey, go. Eight sixty nine, go figure. y'all applaud because that went well or because it's over. <laughs> Could be both. But that way loading cattle, those that were on the trailer weren't trying to jump off, were they? All that do is turn them back around. They sat there and waited. Now listen to the trailer. Pretty quiet, isn't it? So they're comfortable. They got on there on their own accord. They can find a spot and they get quiet. They're going to move a little bit. One, because there's no cut gauge set so they can move back and forth in the trailer. We'd have been better off probably putting in there and stock density is a big deal in a trailer. You want them tight, but you don't want them so tight they can't move. And then they get stressed. So get them where they're, when they, you do shift in your trip, they're not falling over. You can have one compartment loose, but try to have the rest of them. I see people that'll just hot shot and stack cattle on top of one another so they won't leave two in another compartment. I don't get that. Loosen them up a little bit. And if you've got to hot shot your cows to get the gate closed so you can get your horse on there, right, you either need to haul less cows or come back and get your horse. Because I see people going down the highway all the time with cattle down in their trailer and a horse in the back. That's a bad, bad thing to see going down the highway. It's one of those very public things that we don't think about, and we don't even know is happening as we're going down the highway. But if we stacked them in there that close, we've we got a good chance it's gonna happen. Any questions on this part of it? Like I said, that's jumping them straight into the trailer. That's not even getting them lined out and getting them single file going in there. If you did have it, you might actually need another person at the trailer to make them jump. So I, I don't mind doing this at all. You just got to be patient, let them figure it out. But I was patient, but how long did it take? Not long at all, right? And if you're loading out an alleyway, which a lot of people do, you're going to wind up behind the cattle a lot, but you lose the ability to make the front jump when you do that. And if you put too much pressure on the back, they want to run over the top of you. And so when you're pressuring from behind in a situation like that, you've got to make sure you don't put too much pressure on these cattle that are trying to do the right thing. So you've got to allow them to keep turning and pushing. Just like when I come around the front of that chute the first time, I had to let the cattle push themselves around there. Because if I put too much pressure, they'd have blown back over me into the pen. Same thing in the alleyway. So most people get in there and they're screaming and hollering and whipping on the cattle that cannot go anywhere. Their only option is to come over the top of you to get rid of the pressure. Well, that's what they think is their option, okay? So pressure, release, give them a place to go. Something I haven't talked about and we don't talk about a lot when you're working by yourself, if there's two of you working, Unless you're opposite ends of the herd, you can't both be putting pressure at the same time. And that's something cowboys have a hard time with. It's the same thing when you're taking a herd in, everybody's pushing. But if you're doing it right, somebody's pushing more here and somebody's giving them a place to go. And then that one pushes pressure. And it's just give and take until you get everything moved where they need to go. But if everybody's pressuring, that's when the herd goes to spilling. And everybody gets around them. They surround the herd. Boy, they're pushing them all together and they wonder why this herd spills. The spill because you ask them to spill. So those on the outside of herd, y'all ever heard of concept of T to a gate? It's hard to even explain, but if you've got a bunch of cowboys here, you need to stay in a straight line. The gates 
the bottom of the T is the, the line going to the gate. And so wherever you're at, that top of that T moves this way. It doesn't go this way, it moves this way. So if this bunch needs to bring cattle in, this bunch takes pressure off. Now remember when I first started, I, I come out to the side to keep the front straight. That's the same concept as that T, okay? You just, when you're by yourself, you're the top of the T. So you gotta be in all those spots at some point in time. You gotta release over here, put pressure up here, or vice versa. And so if you think of it, and that is really, really hard for people to do. If you're wanting to go through a gate up here, make yourself go off over here. Oh, Lordy. That's one of the toughest things a cowboy can make himself do, ride in the wrong direction. But when you do that, you take pressure off that eye. Y'all remember this heifer that wouldn't, I couldn't push her eye into that opening a while ago? So I had to go to the other side and draw her eye that way. So if you're pushing on them, they keep looking at you and they don't turn loose to go find where you need them to go. That's, a, that's something you really have to work on. It's one of the toughest things I see people trying to retrain themselves is to back off when they need to. All right, I've done all the damage I'm gonna do to these and I've enjoyed it very much and Vaca Corrales, is that who brought the? Peyton Ranches. Peyton Ranches. Yes, Thank y'all very much for letting me harass your heifers. Um, I want to thank Andy and the committee for letting me come up here and play. This is always a lot of fun to me to come work cows and, and get paid for it. That's kind of fun. And so we get, we get to do these all over the country in a lot of different settings. We do feedlot training, preconditioning. I like the preconditioning side of it a bunch because we can take a lot of stress off cattle by training them to do what we need them to do like this and really help on the health side of it. We can help reproductive performance. We can help on the health side. And I think for the young people that are still here, this is an area I think, unless something just falls completely apart, this is gonna be an area where you can make a name for yourself. We need people that get skilled at this that we can send out in the country. 